Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, the creator of Brutal Test, and today we're going to talk about verifying arrays and lists. If you haven't already, I suggest you go and check out one of the first episodes on how to get started with approvals, and then episode four on approving and verifying simple objects. But let's dive into arrays. So here I have a test already set up and ready to go. And what I'm going to do is test the sorting of names. So first I'm going to need some names. And fortunately, I already have a method that will give me those. And then next I need to sort them, right? So I'm going to use the array.sort on the names. And then finally I need to verify that this sorting has occurred correctly. So I'm going to say approvals. And of course, what you'd really like to do is just say verify the names. But if I do this and run it, then you'll see that when it runs, because of the two string that is attached to the array, I get no useful information at all. All it tells me is it's an array of strings. So to do something useful, instead of verify, I'm going to have to say verify all. And that's going to require me to put in some sort of label. Now, for this case, I think a label of name would be good. So I'm going to run this again. And now you can see I have a list here of all the names, and it's very easy to actually read them, see that they're in the right order. Right here is the part where we have the label that was used. And if I like this, I can just simply say use this whole file and make it my golden master. Now when I run it again, you can see that it passes. I want to compare this for a second with what this would look like. This is the same test using MS test to assert against it. Now MS test is the worst of the frameworks for testing arrays, but they all have this basic characteristic that I'm going to have to reproduce and sort of verify each and every step of the array. And when you had stuff like this, what I found is I spent a lot of energy trying to make this as absolutely short as possible. And it actually took a considerable amount of skill to find use cases and scenarios to test that were easy to test because the verification was so hard. Once I started moving up here to approvals, I found that it was much easier for me to write tests because I no longer had to think, what is the simplest solution that I can reasonably verify? I could now just say, what is the simplest solution that makes sense? I'm going to take this just one step further and look at what happens with a process. And I'm going to go into this process a lot more in the upcoming videos. But instead of sorting the names right now, I want to transform the names. All right? And so the idea here is like, what if I didn't want to test array.sort, right? which is just something that gives me a list back? What if I wanted to test something against a list? Like if I wanted to test the to uppercase function on string. So instead of testing the sort, what I'm going to do here is instead for each of the names, I'm going to do a select and transform them to the uppercase. And now you can see when I run this that I get all the names in full uppercase. And again, very simple to approve this whole list. I'd like to close tonight highlighting Jason Kearney, who is a friend down in San Diego, worked with me a lot on the whole side of arrays and enumerations in C Sharp here. And this transformation technique, and we're going to take this into a lot more robust situations in the next podcast, this all came from working with Jason and put him pushing what he wanted to do when he verified the arrays. As always, if you have any questions about approval tests, tweet them with the hashtag approval tests and monitor that and we'll answer it promptly.